my friends, my name is Leander, and I hope you're having a great day so far. In this video, we will continue to play Deckscape, the test. If you haven't seen the first video, this is an escape room game for one or several players and it simulates the experience of being in a real life escape room. We are in the laboratory of Dr. Thyme. Oops, I hope I can find him. Where are you, Dr. Thyme? Here. Here he is, the lab of Dr. Thyme, and because he is so clumsy, we are locked in, and he fell through a trapdoor. In the last video, we solved some of the puzzles. One we got wrong because I didn't read all the instructions, but after that, we had a good run and we ended the video when we found this access card matching this card reader. So now we're going to continue by putting the card into the card reader and seeing what happens. Okay, well, it seems that, yes, that I have made a mistake, because it read to put in the card with the arrow facing in the same direction, but to be honest, I had forgotten about that. And if I turn it around, you can see there is an actual arrow hidden in these shapes. So it was supposed to go in like this. Oh well. That is our second mistake, or rather my second mistake. So we get another imaginary X on our mistake card, but I mean, in real life, we could just turn the card around if nothing happens. So we put these cards aside and see what is revealed. Vier Monitore. Die Roboterstimme erklingt. Schaltet den Monitor aus, auf den die Taschenlampe hinweist. Welchen Monitor schaltet ihr aus? Four monitors. Paris, London, Berlin and Rome. The robot voice is sounding. Turn off the monitor that the flashlight is pointing to. Which monitor do you turn off? So, we haven't seen or used a flashlight yet, but if we look here, underneath the blue card that we turned over last, there is a flashlight. Eine nutzlose Taschenlampe. A useless flashlight. Ihr steckt die Zugangskarte hinein und die Wand öffnet sich. Eine Taschenlampe rollt vor eure Füße. Ihr könnt sie leider nicht einschalten, weil keine Batterien eingelegt sind. Glücklicherweise funktionieren die Lichter im Labor noch. Also ist es euch egal. Behaltet sie. Sie könnte nützlich sein. Dreht diese Karte nur um, wenn ihr die Batterien habt. So... When we put the access card into the panel, a wall is opening 
and a flashlight is rolling out in front of our feet. We can't use it yet because we don't have batteries. But luckily the lights in the laboratory are still working. So it says that we don't care. Keep it. It could be useful. Only turn this card around once we have the batteries. Okay, so we need a flashlight, a working flashlight to know to which, toward which monitor it is pointing or pointing us, maybe. But we need batteries to use the flashlight. So we need to find batteries. We already know that we can't open the toolbox because that was one of the mistakes I made last video because we are missing a card to decipher the combination so I think our only way to continue is this one das Schmuckkästchen ihr findet ein verstecktes Schmuckkästchen mit fünf mysteriösen Symbolen Auf der Rückseite steht folgender Hinweis. Drückt die 6, um dieses Kästchen zu öffnen. So, the jewelry box. You find a hidden jewelry box with five mysterious symbols. On the back it says, push the 6 to open this box. So... We have these five symbols. They look a bit like, I don't know, Chinese symbols maybe, but they're probably, my guess, not real Chinese symbols. And we have this window-like symbol at the front. So now we have to find out which symbol symbolizes number six. So let's look at the notes from earlier. The number six. Are there any symbols on here that could lead us to the number six? I So, we have all these curves, two dimensions, three dimensions, we have a light prism, we have this thing that I think is a, like a little kitchen timer, we have all these formulas and we have this thing that we already used. So, can we deduct anything from these shapes? Or do these keys maybe play a role somehow? think they do. Well, what can we see here? We have a shape with four sides and one whole one area, one enclosed area in the middle. We have a shape with two enclosed areas. Well, okay, no. This shape has six. Um, I don't know. Open ends. Six straight lines sticking out. This shape has four lines sticking out. 
these two don't have any, and this one also has four. Hmm. To be quite honest, I have no idea. Let's put it back down again. So, what else can we look at? Maybe the laboratory? So, just a reminder, we are looking for batteries for the flashlight. We still have this capsule without any information about what this could tell us. We have the toolbox, where we technically, technically know the answer, but we haven't actually found the clue yet to get there, so I don't think it would be fair to continue to use this. We have the keys, which we just looked at, and we have the notes, which we also looked at. So, it seems like I am missing something here. And I think it's probably to do with the shapes on this jewelry box. Um, I'm sure there's a way to decode these symbols or to get some kind of connection between lines or areas or anything, but I can't see it right now. I mean, this kind of seems the most obvious to me. It kind of reminds me of a, of the pattern of a manual car gear layout where you have to use the, shikst, the stick shift, one gear, gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five, gear six, or maybe reverse, um, but I don't think that's the actual clue, but since I don't know how else I could continue, I'm just going to press this button and hope for the best. Let's see what the solution is. What? Drückt auf das vierte Symbol von links. Es besteht aus vier Sechsen. Oh mein Gott. Jedes Symbol entstand durch das viermalige Kopieren und Spiegeln der gleichen Zahl. Yeah. Push on the fourth symbol from the left. So this one. It is made up of four sixes. Every symbol um, is made up of four copies and mirror images of the same number. And now it seems very, very obvious once you know the solution. Because it's... 5, 8, 7, and 4 just copied and mirrored to give those shapes. So, we got that wrong. That is another imaginary X for a mistake. But we're here to have fun, so I'm just gonna move on. So, inside we find im Schmuckkästchen liegt eine große alte Plastikkarte, die drei Siebener zeigt. Warum hat der Doc diesen Gegenstand versteckt? In the jewelry box there is a there is an old plastic card that shows three sevens. Why did the dog hide this object? Turn the card around. Look at it, might be useful. So, 
we already know what this is because that was one of the mistakes I made earlier. We have to use this to do that. And there we get the code for this number lock down here. So we enter two, three, seven. And get this. Ein seltsames Ding. Ihr öffnet den Deckel des Werkzeugkastens und findet darin einen seltsamen blauen Gegenstand. Ihr habt noch nie etwas Vergleichbares gesehen. Dreht diese Karte um und schaut euch den blauen Gegenstand an. Behaltet ihn. Er könnte nützlich sein. So, a weird thing. You open the lid of the toolbox and find a weird blue object. You have never seen anything like it. Turn the card around. Look at it. Look at it. It could be useful. And I think we know what this is. There is a symbol for a light bulb here. It seems to have two sides, which, I don't know, this looks something like you can screw in, but this looks like... I think it could be some kind of battery, to be honest. So, that's what I'm gonna try. I'm going to try to put this thing into the flashlight. See what happens. Nope. Once again, <laughs> that is not correct. I did not look at the solution or what this flashlight tells us later on. But it just seems to use regular batteries. Well, let's look at the red card then. Vier Laborgläser. Ein Poster an der Wand zeigt eine chemische Reaktion, die durch die Kapsel ausgelöst wird. In welches der Laborgläser gibt ihr die Kapsel? Four laboratory beakers. A poster on the wall shows a chemical reaction that is um, started by the capsule. In which of the beakers do you give the capsule? Do you put the capsule? So, it's this capsule the card is talking about. And now we can finally try to make sense of it. And... <laughs> Well, I don't know if you can see that. I got this game secondhand and it seems like the previous owner used a pen on this card. Well, but I think we could have figured it out anyway. So we take the capsule here and see it goes to a gray ball or molecule or something like this. So we go to the gray one, goes to a green one, green to blue, to blue to yellow, yellow to yellow, yellow to white, white to white, to black to black, black to reddish pink, oh, pink maybe, to pink, to white and double red. So, here we have a beaker with white and double red, and here one with red and double white. So, it's gonna be the yellow beaker, I believe. I hope. If not, then I'm gonna be upset if that's wrong again. So, I'm gonna take the capsule, put it in the yellow beaker, see what happens. 
and this time we are correct so let's see what happens die reaktion die flüssigkeit in dem glas beginnt zu brodeln bis sie überkocht der trank verpufft in einer gelben wolke ein seltsamer kristall fällt aus der wolke und rollt unter den Schreibtisch. Ihr hebt ihn auf. Dreht diese Karte um und schaut euch das Prisma an. Behaltet es. Es könnte nützlich sein. So, the reaction. The fluid in the glass begins to boil until it boils over. The mixture evaporates into a yellow cloud. A weird crystal falls from the cloud and rolls onto the desk. You pick it up. Turn this card around and look at the prism. It could be useful. And this reminds me of the notes from earlier. Because here we have, I hope you can see it, we have a prism which splits up the light into its components. So, Roy Jibuf, <laughs> red, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, infrared, no, I don't know what I and V is, to be honest. I know that on one side of the spectrum we have infrared, and uh, under the other it's ultraviolet, but maybe I'm mixing something up here. So, can we do anything with that? Not sure. I mean, we could shine the light from the flashlight through the prism, but we still don't have the batteries. Hmm only have this weird blue thing. Okay, let's put that all aside. And look what else is in the toolbox. Im Werkzeugkasten findet ihr auch einen Papierstreifen mit einer Zeichenkette und eine kleine Fernbedienung. Für welche Zahl steht das X auf dem Streifen? So in the toolbox you also find a little paper strip with a row of digits and a little remote control. Which digit or number does the X stand for? Or does it rep represent? So we have, if you can see it, two, two, four, one, one, two, five, six, two, eight, one, four, and then the X. Um, so we have to, I guess we have to find a pattern in these numbers. I think that would make sense. So let's see. Two, two plus two is four. One plus one is two. Five plus six is, well, not 28. That's not it. Um, Divided by 2 is 112, divided by 2 is 56, 
divided by 2 is 28, divided by 14, uh, by 2 is 14, divided by 2 is 7. I hope that's right. So, let's press the 7. And that is, in fact, correct. And we... <laughs> I even missed a clue, because on the notes, hope you can see it, here it says 224 divided by 2. So, yeah. We didn't even need to figure it out all on our own, but we did. So, good on us. So, we press number 7. And on the next yellow card we have eine Platine. Wenn ihr das fehlende Stück zu dieser Platine habt, findet den fünfstelligen Code heraus, um sie zu aktivieren. A um, what do you call this type of board? Well, you know, the type of board that is in a computer with all the chips. You know what I mean. You can recognize it, I guess. Um, so, and in the red pile we have, in fact, this card, der kaputte Schaltkreis. Is it a breadboard? No, oh, I think that's the one with where you can switch out the chips. I don't know. Unter dem Schreibtisch findet ihr auch einen kaputten Schaltkreis. Folgt den Leiterbahn. Welcher Mikrochip fehlt? So, beneath the desk you also find a broken... this thing. Sorry, I don't know the word. Follow the traces and find out which chip is missing. So... Um... Yes, we start at the electricity symbol, go to 1, go to 7, go to 5, and then to the question mark. 175 question mark. Um, what is the pattern there? It's plus. 6 minus 2, but then, I don't know, maybe look at the notes this time. But, yeah, I don't think there's anything on there. Ah, I think I see it. So, from here, it's just a straight line down that kind of looks like a 1. Then, from the 1 to the 7, we have this shape to the right and then down. So, that look, kind of looks like a 7. From the 7 to the 5, we have over here, up there, left right so that looks like a five then from the five to this chip we have a two i think so let's put in chip number two to see that's correct and it is and we also have the same explanation so get that right and we find or we get rather the repaired thing sorry still don't know the word so ihr setzt den mikrochip ein und der schaltkreis ist repariert wenn ihr nur wüsstet was ihr mit ihm anstellen sollt dreht diese karte um und schaut euch den schaltkreis an behaltet ihn er könnte nützlich sein 
So we put the microchip in and the thing is repaired. If only we knew what to do with it. But we do know what to do with it. We are going to put it into the bigger thing. But then we need the five digit code to activate it. Let's see, is there a five digit code somewhere on the notes? Doesn't look like it. to the side then. And I don't know, do we still need the keys? Probably not, right? Maybe I should have put them to the side or are there some kind of numbers hidden here? Don't think so. We have much more keys than we would need. So, I'm going to put this to the side. And, well, I don't know. I don't think we need to look at the, at the lab again. I think that's just for orientation. The prism we can only use with flashlight and this blue thing I don't know did I no I mean I just saw it when I picked this up the batteries are beneath here so this is not what goes into the flashlight obviously so let's look at this again Maybe there's some clue hidden here in the traces. Or maybe I'm just blind again because, yeah, the clue is right there. I hope you can see it. We have these lines with the... Uh, I don't know, with the other lines going through them. And then we have lines without anything going through them. So if we just look at those lines, we have a 1 here, a 4 here, a 2, a another 1, and a 0. So 1, 4, 2, 1, 0. So we put this in here. Enter this code, check if it's correct. One, four, two, seven, zero. Oh, yes. Mm. Well, this was in fact a seven. If you saw that and I once again didn't, I'm sorry. I guess, I mean, we did find the correct way to find the solution, I just wasn't careful enough in looking at the card. I don't know if you want to call this a mistake or not, but let's just move on. So, we enter the code and nothing happens. Ihr gebt den Code ein und es passiert nichts. Dann drückt ihr die grüne Taste und die Roboterstimme sagt Glückwunsch, ihr habt den ersten Teil des Tests geschafft. Ihr wartet, aber es geschieht nichts weiteres und es gibt immer noch keine Spur vom Doc. Ihr beschließt die Fernbedienung zu öffnen und nehmt die Batterien heraus. Sie könnten später noch nützlich sein. So, 
You enter the code, nothing happens. You push the green button and the robot the robot voice says Congratulations, you have finished the first part of the test. You wait, but still nothing happens and there's still no sign of the dock. So you decide to take the batteries out of the remote. Well, I could have done that much earlier if the game had allowed me to do it. But well, we have the batteries. We can finally put them into the flashlight. We can now turn it around. No, we can't. Can we? I don't know. Turn this around only if we have the battery. Yes, we have the battery. So. The light is making a weird shadow on the wall. What is the meaning of this? I guess this is what we have to now get a clue out of for the four monitors. To turn this on the side, turn this around. It's like an R M N N M. No, that's not correct. So, what do these symbols mean? Why is there a minus sign there? So we have one, two, three, four, five regular signs plus this one. Um, Paris has five letters, London has six, Berlin has six, Rome has four. So if we don't count this, then Paris would be the answer, but that can't be all, can it? has to be some deeper meaning to, to those symbols. Um, can we use the prism with that? No, I don't see how. Maybe the notes give us a hint. Mm, I don't think they do. Is this some kind of numbers? This minus this, but I don't think so. I'm trying to think if this is somehow mirrored or upside down, but I don't see that either. Maybe if we have to cut it off once again, but no. blue thing. Don't think that helps us either. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna go for my five symbols equals five letters 
theory and say it's going to be Paris, but not very hopeful to be honest. Let's check it out. It is Paris and oh my god. Yeah, those were letters, obviously. They were just really, really stretched out and you had to turn you had to turn the flashlight around and it's spelled Eiffel, like the Eiffel Tower. Well, okay. Yet another mistake. Der Monitor geht nicht aus. Das Bild ändert sich und die Roboterstimme sagt, nehmt die richtige Position ein. Welche der vier Positionen nehmt ihr ein? The monitor doesn't turn off. The picture changes and the robot voice says, assume the correct position. Which of the four positions do you take or assume? I hope you can see that it's a person standing from the front, from the side, from the back, and a person sitting. And we have the colors. I think the colors that are present in this note here, the drawing on the note, but what does that tell us? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Still don't know what I is, and then violet, maybe? But I don't see how that has any thing to do with the positions. The prism. Well, the prism is really just a picture of a prism. The blue thing doesn't have anything to do with that either. The problem is you can probably see what I already saw as well in the background, but I still want to find out um, which, I mean, why it seems that green is the correct one. Is it? Because if you look here, you see the face of the guy, like a profile, like a person standing from the side. You see the face with the nose sticking out. So maybe it is number two. You know what? Let's just say it's number two. Let's see what happens. And it is. So, what did I see here? Well, something different. And the solution was correct. Ein Lichtstrahl zeigt auf die Wand. Plötzlich zeigt ein Lichtstrahl auf die Wand. Die Roboterstimme sagt, Aktiviert alle Lichtsensoren gleichzeitig. Was macht ihr? So, suddenly a beam of light is pointing at the wall. The robot voice says, Activate all light sensors at once. What do you do? And I think we know the answer. We have a prism. Even if we don't know what the prism does, we have, sorry, we have this drawing here on the notes showing us what a prism does. 
So we use the prism to split the light to activate all the buttons or sensors at once. And that is of course correct. Good. We are making progress. Das Licht blendet eure Augen für ein paar Sekunden, während die Strahlen um eure Körper herumwirbeln. Plötzlich hält das Licht an und ein mechanischer Arm spuckt eine CD aus dem Computer aus. Das ist euer Body Scan. The light is blinding your eyes for a few seconds while the rays swirl around your body. Suddenly the light stops and the mechanical arm is putting out a CD from the computer. That is your body scan. So, and we didn't properly look at it before, but on the blue deck we have this card. Behind the wall is a bizarre door. To open it, you must put in a CD and press the buttons in the correct order. So, we have the CD and on here you can see blue, orange, yellow, red, green, which I think we should press then. How does this work? Blue, orange, yellow, red, green, blue, blue, orange, no, yes, blue, orange, yellow, no, well, how does that work? If we look really closely up here in the corner, you can see there's a thing that looks like our blue thing, our blue object, but it doesn't ask for that. Hmm. So, 3D body scan, blue, orange, yellow, red, green, blue, orange, yellow, I mean, oh no, it's probably orange twice, but still, blue, orange, yellow, orange, green, but we have two greens there, so, hmm, I mean, I can see that the previous owner has drawn something on here once again, but I don't see how that's correct, to be honest, I don't understand, truly don't understand what do I I think I do blue orange yellow orange green and yeah in fact that is correct gotta go forwards and then backwards so we can put the CD and this card to the side and look at the next one the door is still blocked. Die Stimme sagt, in welche Richtung müsst ihr das Rad drehen, damit sich die Uhr gegen den Uhrzeigersinn dreht? So the door is still blocked, the voice says. In which direction do you have to turn the wheel so that the clock turns against, so uh, counterclockwise? So here's a wheel, and here is the clock. And what, how does that work? If those wheels both touch the clock, how can it turn at all? 
or am I making a mistake now? Let's say so the clock is supposed to turn counterclockwise this way around. So this way, so this wheel has to turn clockwise and then this wheel has to turn counterclockwise again. But counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Oh yeah, no, that works. So counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Right? Let's try it out. Counter clockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Yeah. So we have to turn the wheel counterclockwise, I hope. And that is in fact correct. And I hope you know why I thought at the beginning that it was impossible because maybe you know the the picture where I think it was a school district wanted to show how parents, teachers and students have to work together and they had three wheels interlocked all at once which in this case oh no just in general is just impossible because they all touched at least two other wheels and then nothing can move so on the green pile we have der Schlüssel zum Koffer But I think this video is long enough already, so we'll continue next time. I hope you had fun. If you did, join me in the next video to finally, hopefully finally, solve the puzzle and get out of this room to find dark time. I would be really happy if you could leave a like or maybe subscribe to the channel if you like this video. And until next time, make the best of it. <laughs>